So I want you to picture, if you can, a hero descend, ascending over the horizon and the uh, heat waves are in the air and maybe there's a sunset behind him and you can hear the heroic, legendary, epic music start to play. Do, 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 do. As he or she ascends and starts to walk toward the camera on the horizon. This is the heroic moment where the hero has just defeated his or her enemy. This is how you are going to be in a very short amount of time. But who is the enemy that you are trying to defeat in your hero's journey? Well, in this case, you are trying to defeat your own brain. In some cases, we might see like a hero come over and he's he's dragging a monster in chains and he's got the monster all chained up. We want you to be able to put your brain in chains, so to speak, because you have to subdue it, bring it under control and make sure your brain is working for you instead of your brain just working you. See, what happens to us as trauma survivors, sometimes we may have had abusive parents that brought us up with so much negative criticism, uh, so much verbal abuse that we keep a little verbal abuser in our brain. And that verbal abuser is defeating us all the time, telling us all of these negative things. You're not capable. You're not able. You're not worthy. You're ugly. Everyone's judging you. People are thinking bad about you, right? If you have that, that negative voice in your brain, it's some called the inner critic, it's going to bring you down in life because you can't progress anywhere in any way, shape, or form when you've got something in your own mind working against you. Your mind is your tool. It needs to be working for you. It needs to be working with you. And so to do this, you have to understand how to bring the brain, that automated computer system, and wrestle it down into submission. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How do we wrestle our brains down into submission? Because many people say, no, but my brain, it just says, it just beats me up like you are awful, you are dumb, you are crazy. And it just goes and it's on loop. It's on repeat all day, every day. Well, no wonder we're suffering from depression. Or my brain, it just thinks of all the worst case scenarios. It's, it's catastrophizing and it's thinking of all the calamities and everything bad that can possibly happen. Well, no, no wonder we're suffering from anxiety. Or my brain's thinking about how things aren't fair and the injustice. No wonder we're suffering from anger. Or my brain's replaying the things I just don't understand about my parents, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, what happened to me. And no wonder we're ruminating and we feel like we can't stop it. But I'm here to tell you today, you can stop it. You can stop rumination. You can stop your anxiety. You can stop the depression. You can put cessation to any of these mood states because they all come from the perception of the subconscious mind, which is the brain. It's that automated computer system that's just going, going, going. We got to stop it before it's gone. So how do we get in control of this thing? How do we really get on top of this, of this negative thinking? Remember that you decided upon a negative mindset because you felt it would be a protection for you. It is a way you adapted to your trauma. You see, by you already thinking that everything is going to be as bad as it could possibly be, by you assuming the worst, you felt that that would protect you. Because now you can't be surprised, you can't be broadsided like you were in the past. Now you won't feel so stupid, you won't feel so naive, you just always expect the worst. You expect your, sp your spouse to be cheating on you, you expect for your, your child to get in an accident and to get hurt, you expect for yourself to fail at your job interview, you expect things to go wrong because you feel like that will protect you. But how's that really working? The reality is putting ourselves in the mind state of catastrophizing and believing in all of the worst and looking for all of the worst only helps us to find all of the worst in our real lives. So we are crafting our own reality to our own detriment. This is why we should call this detrimental thinking. When you think negative things about yourself, that is detrimental thinking. When you're pondering negative ruminations, that is detrimental thinking. You thought that it would protect you 
but really it is tearing you apart. It is bringing you down and it is holding you back. Detrimental thinking is not your friend. It's not going to protect you. So how do we break out of this detrimental thinking? Is it even possible? Of course, right? Because since our brains have neuroplasticity, that means they're changeable. So all that you've done is just created a neural pathway, some neural networks in the brain. We can get that rewired, no problem. We just have to know how to fight back so that we can win the battle with our brains. Now, how do we do this? Well, well we got to get out of the detrimental thoughts and into some thoughts that are really going to help us. So detrimental means harmful, right? So we got to get out of the harmful thoughts into the healthy thinking. And we simply combat the harmful with the healthy thinking. So an example of this is when you're thinking, I'm not capable, I'm not able, I, I can't do it. You combat it with the healthy thinking. You say, I am capable, I can do it. This is possible. All right? When you, when you go directly against and you challenge those detrimental thoughts, you're creating a new neural pathway in the brain. But many have said this is easier, this is easier said than done. It's not my inclination to, to, to try to think in this upbuilding way. Well, I want to give you a little shortcut to helping your brain to work with you. And it's called uh, using propitious questions. Now, before you just give up on the phone call and say, I don't know what that means. I'm not smart enough to be here. Please understand this word propitious is an old English term. It's archaic English and no one really uses it today. Uh, but I thought that it would be good for us to resurrect this word for our usage because we are expanding uh, what we're actually doing in psychology here. And so the, the current vernacular that we're speaking with just isn't sufficient uh, to encapsulate everything that we're talking about. So propitious actually just means something that is advantageous or giving to good success, favorable. Propitious is something that is giving good chance of success, advantageous, or favorable. That's what propitious means. So when we talk about asking a propitious question, we're saying, ask yourself a question that is going to give you success. Ask yourself a question that is going to be favorable, that is going to be helpful instead of the detrimental questions that we tend to ask ourselves. Right. So, so, so we have these detrimental ways of thinking and, and speaking to ourselves, such as, why am I such a loser? We say things like that to ourselves. Why am I such a loser? That is a detrimental question and is best fought with a propitious question, such as, why am I such a winner? Now, this is very important, you see, because the way that your supercomputer works is that it is designed to solve problems. And so when you ask it a question, it tries to answer that question. So you see how detrimental it is to ask yourself, why am I such a loser? Because your brain will try to answer that question. And so you'll say, why am I such a loser? And your brain will start to tell you, well, because you lost your job and because you got dumped and because you're divorced and because you, you don't have any money and because you, and, and then when you're thinking all those things subconsciously, a few minutes later, you say, oh man, I feel horrible. Oh my God. Why do I feel so horrible? I know why. Because you made your brain work on telling you why you're a loser and you didn't even realize you did it but now you do be educated on how this thing works it is a supercomputer and it works all the time it has to solve problems that's the job of the brain so it's going 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 solving 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 what do you got what do you got you're feeding it questions so don't ask questions like why am i such a loser because if you ask a question like that your brain is going to answer you and you're not going to like the answers because they are detrimental thoughts. And thinking those detrimental thoughts are detrimental to the self and they create a terrible reality 
for yourself. So in order to, to craft a positive reality, just a positive mood state, we want to give our brain propitious questions. Remember, prop propitious is giving good chance of success, advantageous, favorable. So we want to say, why am I such a winner? And you know what your brain will do? Your brain will say, well, that's weird. Well, this is a new one, but it will get to work. It'll start digging and saying, well, you know, there was that one time in fifth grade that you won the spelling bee. And, oh, well, you know what? You really got a really good uh, family. And, and, you, and you know what? You, you got really great hair. And you know what? Uh, you've done really good with your fitness goals. And, and you know what's going to happen a few minutes later? How are you going to feel? You're going to be like, I feel pretty good right now. Why do I feel good right now? It's because you gave your, your brain a propitious question. When you use propitious questions, you can stop rumination, right? Because the rumination is the thinking of and asking of questions that are difficult to answer, but they are also negative. And that's why we don't like the rumination. And that's why we're calling it rumination because it's something that's bad for us. But we can perseverate or ruminate on things that are actually positive. In fact, we do. It's just that we don't notice it because we feel good when our brains are working on things that are actually positive, that are actually constructive when it's solving problems that need to be solved. So we have to use propitious questions to get the brain working in a propitious manner, a manner that is good for us, that will lead us to success, that is favorable. So instead of saying, why am I broke? Flip it and say, why am I not broke? Instead of saying, why am I ugly? Flip it and say, why am I beautiful? Instead of saying, why me? Flip it and say, why not me? These are what I call level one propitious questions. The reason I call them level one propitious questions is because we're just using a simple, a simple formula to get the question. We just flip. Whatever you say, whatever question you have in your mind, you're just doing a little flip on, on the same question turning it around and just asking the same question in opposite format so that it's actually propitious, that is positive, that is upbuilding, that is advantageous, that is helpful to you. It's pretty simple, right? You can do that. But sometimes we run into questions that are a little tougher to flip. And so then we got to get into level two of creating propitious questions. Now, now before we go into level two of creating propitious questions, I want to make sure you understand what we're talking about. So, so are you picking up what we're putting down right now? Is, is this stuff actually making sense to you? Right? We got the brain. It's going to solve problems. If you feed it a problem, a question, it's going to answer that question. So if you give it a detrimental question, such as why am I a loser? Why am I so stupid? Then it will try to answer that and it will make you feel bad. It'll work against you. So you got to give it, why am I a winner? Why am I so smart? And it will start to answer that question, which will create a whole new mood state, which will bring you into a whole new reality, right? It's a whole new way of thinking, and it's creating new neural pathways in the brain. This is how we heal the brain. This is it. We're unchanging what has been changed. So if we get into a difficult question, uh, such as... Why am I, why do I care what people think? And we can't just flip it very easily, like, um, why do I not care what people think? Sometimes it's not easy because you might be thinking, but I do care what people think. That was my whole original question, why do I care what people think? Sometimes we, we feel a little stuck, like, okay, we ask ourselves, well, why do I not care? But then you're saying to yourself, but I do care. Right. So, so what we have to do in order to advance our question, in order to really be able to bring the brain in that propitious direction, is we need to center our objective and we need to aggrandize. So centering the objective is very simple. That's just figuring out what is the ultimate ideal objective? How do you want this to all turn out? So when you're playing back to yourself, like, why did my friends betray me? And you find yourself ruminating. And then you say, well, let me change this. So you try level one propitious question. You say, why do my friends not betray me? 
And you're like, ah, that doesn't work. Like, I can't just flip this question. Like, I need to really get this propitious question on a level two. So, so to get a level two propitious question, we need to identify the objective, what our ideal objective is, and we need to aggrandize. So, so the ideal objective, what is my obje- my ideal objective of this situation? Well, well, I want to have friends. That's what I'm thinking about. I, what I would like to, ha- to happen out of all of this is I would like to have friends, right? Identify that objective. I'd like to be surrounded by friends. And now that helps us to formulate the question that will be propitious, which is, why am I going to be surrounded by friends regardless? And then it gives your brain that to work on. It goes, oh man, that's a good question. And then it starts chewing on that, putting you in a better mood state, changing your reality. Did you catch that? So we, we looked for the objective. My objective was, well, I just want to have friends. I want to be surrounded by friends. So then I turned that into a question. Why am I going to be surrounded by friends regardless? Right? So when we look at, at this original question, why do I care what people think? And then we're trying to, we're trying to bring it up to, into level two. We can say, why am I wonderful no matter what people think? And here we have a little bit of self-aggrandizing. Now, that word aggrandize means giving or indicating, I'm sorry, uh, to aggrandize means to pull something into uh, power, into favor, to pull something into higher status or greater wealth. That's what it means to aggrandize. Grandizing is to increase in power or status or to increase in the wealth of. To increase in power, status, or to increase in the wealth of. So we have to learn to aggrandize ourselves. We have to learn to aggrandize ourselves. Now, now this has a negative connotation. Self-aggrandizing, you may have heard that before. But that's in association with like narcissists and con men and like negative people. So, so why is it good to aggrandize ourselves? Let's let's recognize that as an ego deficient person, you are the opposite of an egoic or or an or an egocentric person, right? Ego paths have too much self-aggrandizing, but they're on a the whole nother extreme. You're never going to get there. For you as, a, as an ego deficient person, an empath, for you to worry that you're going to become a narcissist by, by aggrandizing a little bit is like someone who's in a financial deficit, worrying that getting a job will make them a, a filthy rich person. It's just not going to happen. Don't worry about that. Take the job, get the money you can, get yourself in a better situation. We are achieving balance. So, we're going to pull you out of ego deficiency by using some self-aggrandizing. So you have to actually build yourself up. Aggrandizing means that you're giving yourself power, you're giving yourself status, you're giving yourself worth, and we're doing that mentally, and we're and we're flipping it into a question, right? So now we're saying, instead of, uh, why do I care what people think? You're saying, why am I wonderful no matter what others think? You see that aggrandizing in there? Why am I wonderful no matter what others think? So let's say you're saying, I really fear a rejection and and abandonment. So you could say, why does abandonment not phase someone of my stature? See how we aggrandize the self a little bit. We pull ourselves up, right? We're also getting to the objective of the propitious question, which is to get the brain to lock up into a whole new process and to think of things in a whole new way. The importance of aggrandizing cannot be overstressed. You have to understand everything in life moves forward through the process of aggrandizing. We have to look at how we can be more powerful, how we can have more, how we can achieve more. We have supercomputers in our pockets that we walk around with. This is a dream of the future. It is an impossibility in the minds of many. 
but someone had to have the the aggrandizing mind to say, I think we could have supercomputers in our pockets and we can walk around like that before it was a reality. This isn't delusional thinking. To aggrandize is to move yourselves forward. So you must learn to think of yourself and your life and your abilities in an aggrandized manner and move yourself forward. Am I going to become a narcissist? You're not going to become a narcissist. As long as you never aggrandize to the point or never do anything to the point that it is detrimental to another person, then you are not a narcissist. You're not an abuser. Abusers take things to the detriment of others. As a self-aggrandizer, you can aggrandize yourself. You can say, I'm great. I'm wonderful. I'm capable. I can do anything. You can say that. In fact, it's imperative. It's your job now. We're not children anymore. So it's not our mom's job to do it anymore, whether they whether they were there and they did it or not. We're not children anymore. So it's not our father's job to validate us anymore, whether he did it when we were children or not. It is now our job to say, oh, you are wonderful. You are beautiful. You are doing great. I see the work that you're putting in and you are doing a fantastic job. It is your job to move yourself forward, to pull yourself out of just this reality and to create a new reality by moving forward. Because only when you think I could earn money, can you start to earn money? I could be wealthy. Can you start to be wealthy? I can be healthy. Can you start to be healthy? You have to think into the future beyond what is the current reality. Do not feel any hesitation to aggrandize. This is important for creating our propitious questions. So how can we create a propitious question for if you're feeling self-doubt about a situation? You start saying, am I wrong? Am I wrong? You could say, why am I so right? Or what if you're saying to yourself, is it my fault? Detrimental question to yourself. Is this my fault? You could ask yourself, why is this not my fault? You'll notice that we, we word most of these propitious questions with a why. Those are really effective for getting the brain working, right? Why? So if you start to feel like, did I make the wrong choice? Did I make the wrong choice? If you leave it there, you will underthink and your brain will just keep going. Yeah, you did make the wrong choice because of this and this, right? It's a detrimental question. So you have to ask yourself instead, why did I make such a good decision? As soon as you feel yourself going that direction, did I make the wrong choice? And you say, you know what? Why was my decision actually amazing? Yeah, aggrandize it a little bit. And then your, your, your mind will go, and it'll start working on the computations for why your decision was amazing. Next thing you know, you're going to start to feel something. That sensation, that's called confidence. Confidence is a beautiful thing. It's, it's better than happiness. You, when you have confidence, you can be resting and feel good. You can be working and feel good. Confidence is belief. Belief is faith. It's essential to have faith in ourselves, to have belief in ourselves. So look at how you're talking to yourself. Why can't I just be normal? How about, why am I so above being normal? I don't want to be normal. Why am I so beyond just being normal? I'm not basic, right? Or how about, how am I ever going to make it as a single parent? How about, why am I crushing it as a single parent right now? <laughs> why am I crushing it as a single parent? Instead of, oh, I didn't have children, so... Who's going to take care of me when I'm old? How about, why am I not going to need to worry about that? Or, oh, I'm scared to, to disappoint my narcissistic mom or my, my narcissistic dad, because what if I need them? How about, 
Why am I so much better off without them? So I say, man, my, my brain's not working right. I, I think I'm having like, I think I'm just going with my brain. I'm losing my mind. And how about instead of that, how about, why is my brain so awesome? Why, why is my brain so awesome? When you ask yourself these questions, your brain starts working on this stuff. You can convince yourself that you're worthless. You can convince yourself that you're crazy. But of what benefit is that to you? It is of no benefit. It will not help you to convince yourself that you're crazy or that you're worthless or that you're going to lose your mind. So instead, since you're just making up stories anyway, let's make up some stories that are actually going to have a happy ending. How about I'm not worthless? How about why am I so worthy? How about I'm not crazy? How about why am I so sane? After everything I've been through, how am I so sane? Is this making sense? You give yourself that to work on. Your brain starts working on that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to start coming up with answers. And when it comes up with answers for why you're so wonderful, for why you're so smart, for why you're so sane, it's going to start telling you those answers. Hey, you did this. You won that. You did this. You figured this out on your own. You did that on your own. And when you get all that coming into your brain, all that positivity, you focus your mind on the positivity, it's going to build a sensation in the body. That sensation in the body that you're feeling, that's called confidence. You start to actually feel kind of confident in yourself. And when you're confident, you're going to really start doing some wild stuff. You're going to start, you're going to start taking initiative to fix things in your life around the house. You're going to become more motivated to go to the gym. You're going to become a better worker, you're going to make more money in your job, you're going to start your business, you're going to become a little bit wild when you're confident. When you're confident, you'll actually finally start taking some risks. And guess what? That means you'll finally start reaping some rewards because you have to take risks to get reward. You will actually change your reality. And you'll say, wait a second, why am I actually looking buff right now? Why do I actually, why is my waist looking so trim right now? Wait a second. Why am I making so much more money right now? Wait a second. Why am I surrounded by so many people that love me? Wait a second. Why am I so successful? And you're going to say, wait a second. I'm not even trying to ask myself propitious questions. I really want to know how this happened. I don't know why I've changed my reality. But now you're in a cycle of propitious questions. So the more you ask yourself all of these propitious questions, the more to your benefit, the more to your ad advantage is going to be, the more powerful you become, the more capable you become. Just like you went in the cycle the, the, in your former life with all the detrimental questions and you lose, lose, lose. It works the same, the opposite direction. So let's go. Let's do this together. So if you're in your mind and you're thinking, oh, I still hear my, my abuser's voice in my brain. I, I'm never going to be able to get their voice out of my brain. Get yourself a propitious question on that. Get your mind working on that. Say, why am I the perfect reprogrammer of my subconscious mind? If you say, oh, I'm so pathetic. Why am I so pathetic? It's a detrimental question. Flip that. Why am I so awesome? Why am I so awesome? Instead of why does everyone treat me so bad? Flip that. Why am I so beyond the way everyone treats me? Why am I doing so great despite the way other people treat me? If you're feeling scared to do something on your own, and you say, oh, no, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. Ask yourself a propitious question. Why is this about to be an empowering moment? If you're feeling like you're not capable, ask yourself, why am I so capable? If you feel like you're not going to be able to learn something, ask yourself, why do I learn so fast? If you feel like you're not loving towards your husband, Ask yourself, why am I a being of boundless, endless love? If you're feeling like you're not feeling love towards your children, ask yourself, 
Why does my love for my children just overflow? If you feel like you're alone and you're lonely, ask yourself, why do I still feel happy whether I'm with people or without people? If you feel like, oh man, my family, I know they're abusive, but they need me. They don't have anyone else. I have to go. I have to be with them. Oh, I'm stuck. Ask yourself, why is my purpose on earth so much more than being a slave to my family? If you feel like, I don't want to be vulnerable. I don't want to show my feelings to this to this man, to this woman, and to my children. I don't want to be weak with and show love. I don't want to trust. Ask yourself, why is my vulnerability one of my best assets? Aggrandize. Pull yourself up. You're great. You're wonderful. That's the truth. What we find with aggrandizing is actually bringing you closer to truth. You think, oh, I'm being so crazy, telling myself I'm beautiful. No, actually, you are beautiful. It's just actually bringing you to the truth. What's happening with all the negativity is you're really living in a lie. With all that detrimental thinking, that's living a lie. When you, when you are aggrandizing, it's bringing you toward the truth because we make our reality. Our reality becomes formed through the thoughts. And so let's get our thoughts, let's get our perceptions lined up so that we create a reality where we're healthy, where we create a reality where we're confident. Of course, you're going to be happy when you're healthy and you're confident. Let's create a reality where, where we're surrounded in love, whether there's people around or not. Let's create a reality where we're worthy. Let's create a reality where we're capable of, 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 of asserting ourselves. Let's create a reality where, where we're telling people exactly where our boundaries are. Let's create a reality where we're not afraid. Let's throw fear in the trash and let's get thinking through the use of propitious questions. I do hope this information was helpful to you. You can send me a text message if you guys have questions beyond this. So my number is on the website, mindfree.org. You can also set up an appointment and, and do all that good stuff. Um, I'm certainly looking forward to uh, being able to work with some of you that uh, I haven't been able to work with before uh, this this moment. Uh, in our meetup group, we are at 964 members, uh, most of which probably have never come to one of these meetings. But wow, what a fantastic number. And so I would think probably in a month or so, we may hit the number 1,000. So we, we'll have to do something special for that that goal. So thank you for, for shattering all records, for breaking all ceilings. And, and, and so many of you guys are healing. That's so exciting to see that. Continue, please. Uh, reach out if you need help. If you're not in my trauma recovery course, please enroll. Do a month or two in that. Get yourself, get yourself on track. And uh, I'm, I'm excited for you to use this tool of propitious questions. Let me know how it goes. Talk to you soon.